and then you might be thinking well how I, how do i even deploy this stuff is it too difficult to deploy where do i deploy it Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs and in today's video I'm going to answer the following questions that I get asked a lot. How do I get started with building a lab? I don't even know where to start. I'm new to cybersecurity and I'm not sure of what to study or what to even lab at. I'm going to share with you how you would go about the process from the start until where to deploy the lab and I'll share with you the three different options that you have as far as lab deployment and what you can have in them. So I hope this will be very helpful. Well, the first place that you need to start is what is it that you're after? What job positions are you after? Which part of security are you interested in? If you don't know that, then you need to spend some time on websites like indeed.com. In this case, say you wanted to be an information security analyst, go in your area, find out what are employers looking for in people that they hire for information security analyst positions. In this case, uh, let's read this job description here. They want someone who is able to work with end users on detecting and remediating alerts and issues. So this is someone who is able to work with the graph that you saw earlier that I was on. They want someone who is able to uh, help maintain current security related infrastructure. That's something that some of my videos cover like it seems solution is there saying here vulnerability scanners like uh, Nessus and uh, OpenVAS. Uh, they're looking for someone who can help deploy new products and tools to have uh, to advance capabilities of the team. So this analyst that they're looking for here is someone who is going to be able to implement solutions in an infrastructure. So say you wanted to go for this position or positions that are similar to this, where you're either an analyst or an engineer then you create your lab in this manner. For endpoint security, you might end up creating this lab right here where you will be learning about how to monitor endpoints, how to deploy security clients that collect endpoint logs and bring them here, be able to look at endpoints and see what's going on, uh, look at the actual events and really try to dig into these events and understand what is really going on what does events look like? In this case, what does a Windows logon success look like on an endpoint solution? Then you'll be able to drill down and learn this. So once you know what you want to learn, you can go and really find out what technologies are out there. What can you implement in your lab? This way, when you go to an interview and they ask you, what do you know about endpoint security? You can tell them and be honest with them and say, I have never worked in a security capacity but I know that you can deploy endpoint agents and be able to collect security events back. And I have used Wazoo as an example in my lab and even show them this graph and say, this is what I did and this is what I learned from this lab. And you might say, maybe you're interested in the whole network security, network security monitoring. Uh, in this case, you are monitoring firewall logs. I think that was part of the job description there. You can say, well, I have deployed the PFSense firewall and I was able to monitor the events like the blocked IP addresses and uh, the blocked source port. I was able to analyze the traffic, net flow data, and really understand what was going on. And here are my findings. I found out the internet is full of people who are scanning it every day. You know, this is the process where it shows that you are serious about working in cybersecurity. And it shows that you are someone who is going to go that extra mile to be able to get the job done. What if, and then, you might be thinking, well, how, I, how do I even deploy this stuff? Is it too difficult to deploy? Where do I deploy it? So I'm going to share with you the three different options that I found that are feasible. First one is let's deploy it on our local machine. Let's deploy it in free virtual box, virtualized virtual box on a computer. In this case, this computer has 24 gigs of RAM or 16 gigs of RAM. Then inside the virtual box, deploy a bunch of machines. I'll show you on this channel how to do this. It's super easy. Some of these labs are automated, like the one that you're looking at here. I just ran a script and it installed all these machines for me. So this is super simple to set up in VirtualBox. If you're on a Mac, 
you can set up set it up in VMware Fusion. So as you can see, this is my VMware Fusion with Kali Linux here, a PFSense firewall, and a few couple of machines to attack. Super simple to set it up. So that is sort of on the low budget side. Deploy it locally on whatever hardware that you have, which is, is so simple. Well, what if you wanted to learn network security? I mean, some serious network security stuff. You want to learn networking. You want to really understand how networks work. You need to take this further. Let's take this to a real lab at home that actually you can deploy. Convert your whole house into a small business, a small infrastructure. Segment your house into different VLANs. Collect the logs from these different VLANs. Uh, Monitor what's going on in your house. Find out who is using more uh, bandwidth. Find out if your significant other's computer gets infected. Deploy a whole network security monitoring at your house. And this could be a good example. One single server, which I highly suggest that people use real enterprise grade software if you're serious about this. As you can see, I'm running VMware. If you, if you want, if you want to, to know things that people are deploying in the real world, then deploy in your lab what is out there in the real world. In this case, VMware, uh, you can get a free copy of VMware, buy a very cheap server, virtualize things in VMware, know how virtualization work while you set it up, uh, buy an enterprise grade firewall, or at least deploy PFSense on old hardware. Mo monitor these things very carefully. And so some of the logs that you were able to see here, are actually uh, coming from this environment. So this is sort of a more advanced lab, but it's very, very useful. By the time you get done from installing software in this lab, uh, knowing how virtualization is going to work, how to deploy machines in this virtual environment, how to make sure that they communicate correctly on the network so you can access them. It might take a little while, but the skills that you gain there are going to be very, very important. So. Say you didn't have space, you don't have all this time to even wait for all this hardware and your current laptop doesn't work. Well, here's a more expensive solution in my own opinion. Let's go to the cloud. Let's take this lab to the cloud. I just happen to have uh, Microsoft Azure here. I've deployed a lab in Azure. The video that I made last time where I was showing you how to deploy Teapot, Honeypot. I put a Honeypot in my Microsoft Azure environment simple to set up i even have an elk server up there here's a damn vulnerable web app machine where when i was learning web application pen testing skills so you can deploy a whole lab in the cloud as well just bear in mind that when you set up in the cloud um, you get charged a lot for uh, the stuff that you're getting there and keeping this lab running on the cloud means that you will be getting bills from microsoft for you to be able to run it. You can go to Amazon, uh, Google Cloud, it doesn't really matter. But this is where you can actually deploy a, a lab as well. So those are the sort of uh, options that you have. So starting with looking for the skills that you need, listing the skills that you need to acquire, finding out how to get them at home, then putting that on the resume, and then being able to submit that resume to people and convince them that you are the right person. As you can see here, there's no magic you need to put in the work. These labs take time to learn. You need to, you'll be frustrated because you might not understand the technology. You need to learn to look it up, find out how do, does VMware work. It might take you a week to learn just the VMware part. Then how do, how do you deploy machines and all that stuff? Then by the time you do all these things, by the time you learn the system administration stuff, you are going to be a really, really valuable member for any team that takes you because you have done it. I hope you found value in this video. And if you do, please like this video, subscribe to my channel. And I hope you can follow along with some of my videos. Go on this channel, find the playlist that I have. Find the videos that you are interested in. Learn from those videos. Reach out to me in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time when I make another video.